Hello and welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I posted a video, so I apologize for that. Not only that, I did get a cold for a few days right before going to a talkathon, so I did not have the energy to be making videos and to even do Patreon stuff. In these first few clips, it is the day after a talkathon, and I'm putting up some goodies that I got from it. My most prized possession from Otakathon is this Zong Li print that I got from Keith Silverstein. I waited over three hours to get this. I wasn't planning to buy his merch but when I saw this I knew that I had to have it. It was really really worth it. I'm really happy about it. So now it's hanging in my studio. So now it's time to prep for the event that is happening on August 19th. The very first thing I always do when I prep stuff is count my inventory. Usually I don't keep an inventory of my items. I will just put a few up on Etsy. So if I have like 15 of one product, I only put 10. But when I do in-person events, I need to know exactly how many I have. So I always go and count everything I have. This isn't the most fun part of prep, but it's very necessary. So I'll know at the end of the event, what sold, what possibly might have gotten stolen, and to see what was the most popular and what was not so popular. I'm always amazed by how many things I've created. When you're always creating, sometimes you don't think about how much you have been able to produce. And it's just nice to see how many things I've been able to make since I started making art. It's Really, really exciting, and when I take inventory like this, it always reminds me of that. I make DIY rainbow window decals, and I've never taken them to in-person events because I didn't think anyone would be interested in them. I decided to give it a try this time. While I was doing that, my husband is an angel. He takes care of figuring out the table set up for me. Before the event, I decided that instead of putting the products together by the type of product, I was going to split them up by how much the product costs. This would also allow customers to have a wider range of products to choose from if they wanted to do my deals. The next day, I decided to stock up on some more of the products that I needed to fill back up. One of my most popular items are my buttons. I know that a lot of artists have said that they phased out selling buttons, but I think buttons are still a pretty good thing to have. A lot of artists have transitioned to making enamel pins, so they're enamel pins, so a lot better than buttons. But because there is the Eda bag craze, buttons are still a good product to make in my opinion. Not only that, it is inexpensive. It's a great way for people to buy something at a lower cost and not all artists can make enamel pins. Enamel pins are expensive to make. So making buttons for me is still worth it. I have mostly fan art buttons, the majority of it being Fruits Basket characters because I'm a huge fan of Fruits Basket. And the Dashikon, the Fruits Basket buttons flew off the shelf, especially the Kyo and Tori ones. And that made me really, really happy to see so many any Fruits Basket fans out there. I also included a few of my original stuff, mostly Captain Frogo stuff, and those have been really popular as well. During this time, my husband had figured out which section of items are going where on the grid cubes. So he just had these little post-it notes with the amount on them. We did do a little bit of changes later on, but for a day of planning and trying to figure this out, he did a great job. I also decided to make more magnetic bookmarks. I made some about two, three weeks ago, and I wanted to make one more set of each on the paper I'm using, I could put five of each design on there. So in total, I would have 
8 or 10 depending on if I messed up any which I did for some reason there's a curse with a frog cone and I always mess up one of those so I have like 8 frog cones and 10 frobas I wasn't planning to make any new products for this event so now was the perfect time to make them because they do take a while for me to make due to the type of magnets that I'm using for this I'm a huge fan of how I have decided to display my buttons. I came up with this idea when I been at an Adoshicon earlier this year. How this works is that I have 1.25 inch buttons and they are in these acrylic makeup organizers. You can find this exact one on Amazon. I usually have my single die cut stickers in these, but when I've been in person, I use these for my buttons. You can see all of them at the same time they're organized really nicely and I can easily tell which ones are running low I purchased these clear plastic clips that can hold signs and they've been so useful I bought a set of 30 off of Amazon I've seen one of Lisbeer designs artist alley vlogs where she used these clips to help hold up stuff like her sticker book and i thought that was amazing i can't believe i didn't think about that i'm using them to help hold up my sticker sheets and other products that are closer to the back of this acrylic nail polish rack another thing that i bought that was very very useful and life-changing for my setup are these cable clips I was using command strips which work really well as well but the smallest one they have don't fit the majority of the key classes that I have. I could also put the clip part of the lanyards in here and it also has a bit of a groove on the inside so people cannot steal the products or they would have a hard time stealing the product. The only thing about this is that I needed to find a way to make it reusable because once I stick it onto my grid cube or my board that I made, it leaves part of the backing on it. It has a foam backing, it's super sticky, but I wanted it to be reusable so I decided to laminate a piece of cardstock and I peeled the backing off for the cable clip and put it on there and then I put the stickers for the command strips on the back so they're reusable. I didn't take into account that putting the laminate cardstock does not make it that much reusable because the cardstock can break off from either side and make it not reusable. I could probably take the majority of the foam backing on it and it would still be okay but yeah next time I would try something different. I spent the most time making my price tags. Like I said earlier, I decided to split my inventory based on the price versus the type of item. So when I made my first price tags, I didn't include the type of items. I ended up remaking them with the type of items that were in each section. I also ended up making little tags for each product telling what the product was so that when someone looked at it they immediately knew what it was something that i do or that my husband and i does when it comes to the display we put it under a overnight test and i'm sure a lot of people do this as well i want to make sure that the hooks are strong for whatever product is on them i want to make sure that stuff doesn't break off the only problem i had was how I had the enamel pin set up. I made this piece that sticks out using laminated cardstock, but the enamel pins were too heavy for it, so it was falling off. So I decided that I would use two binder clips to help hold it up at the top, and that fixed the problem. For everything that doesn't have a cable clip or some other kind of clip holding it. I use the tacky stuff that you can warm up with your hands and you put it on there and then it sticks onto your display. So that's what I usually use. So my die cut stickers are displayed like that. My sticker sheets are on the grid cubes are like that. All the little signs. I 
spent two days to make sure everything was tagged properly. I had to make sure I made stickers for my letter paper so I could put it on the packaging to tell people that it was letter paper and there was a total of 20 in there. I just wanted to make sure everything is tagged because as a customer, when you look at something, you don't know it right away. There's a huge chance that you're not going to ask. You have to consider the type of customers that go to these type of places. There's a lot of outgoing people, but there's also a lot of people who are introverted when I go to an artist alley, if I don't see the price displayed for an item, I do not ask because usually artist alleys are really hard to go through, especially if you went to a talkathon. If you know, then you know. You only have like a few seconds to look at things before it gets crowded or maybe uncomfortable. So I'm looking really fast to see if items are in my budget. Now it's finally time to decide how many products I wanted to bring. From doing the event last year and from doing a Dashikon earlier this year, I knew that even bringing just five of each product was more than enough. So I decided instead of bringing my full inventory, which I usually would do, mostly because my husband also says, why not bring all of the inventory? I don't have many of each product anyway, so it's kind of like you never know which item is going to do really well, so bring all of them. But I decided that I did not need to do that. I only wanted to bring 10 of each item and I knew that would be more than enough. So here I am picking the products, making sure that I don't accidentally bring B grades. I almost accidentally brought four mushroom cum B grades. I only caught that because my husband and I were going through the products, trying to organize them into these new bins that I bought. And I noticed the B grade I wrote on the back of them. So I quickly switched all four of those for A grades. I don't usually bring B grades unless they're in a mystery bag or if I'm running out of A grades to sell and I need to bring B grades, that's the only time I will have them. Otherwise, they're always on Etsy. One of the things that I always do the day before the event is make sure that my square reader is up to date and make sure that it works. I have gotten a new phone since Nadashikon, so I needed to make sure that I had connected my square reader to it and it was such a breeze to set up. It was so much nicer to use the square reader at the event. We also went to Dollarama and we bought these clear bins with lids on it. My husband was like, I think we should buy these bins and put all your products in it. And that way we don't have to have like 50 Ziploc bags and we don't have to take them all out of it. They're already all in this bin, categorized however you want them. We could take them out, put them in the back. And then once the event is done, we could just put the lids back on and they're done with. It was a great idea. This is the setup that I'm planning to go with tomorrow for the event. For this event, I decided to separate the sections by the cost of the item versus the type of item. So as you can see, I have some acrylic keychains here and I have a few over here. And I decided to do that because I have quite a few items that are around the same price point. So here we have the DIY shaker charms. I brought them down because I really want to get rid of them. So hopefully that will encourage some people to purchase them. These are the only four I have left. I DIY'd them a while back and I don't think I will DIY anymore after this. We have this Mickey button and we have acrylic keychains and the lanyard. So they're $12 each or they have two for 20 and it gives the customers a variety of items to choose from other than just one type of item. This is $15 each or two for 25. Over here we have my enamel pens, some acrylic keychains. I am introducing my seasonal keychains here. We have a little wall decor that I did with needle felting. I have my coasters and my mystery bags that have Four products in it. This here is my very yummy snack bag. 
this is my most expensive product is $25 and just to fill it up I put a front side and a back side and I have this gold bow key class and this rose gold one so there's two options I only have a few of these ones they were originally came with these pink ones but I read out of them so there's a few with the gold ones here are my buttons these are in acrylic makeup organizers these are 1.25 inch buttons I did this setup for Nadashicon and it did pretty well so I'm gonna do it again it's very organized you can see all the buttons in one go all the stationary items plus a few other goodies are on this rack so we have the memo sheets the washi tape the magnetic bookmarks are making their debut here and we have the sticker packs the sticker sheets have the microfiber cloth these are rainbow window decals that I DIY'd and decided to try to bring them to see if anyone is interested in them they have some letter sheet packs here so for this section it's all seven dollars or two for twelve so there's a lot of variety to choose from there the sticker book was over here with the snack bag but i decided to move it over here where the stickers actually are here we have the dollar box that i refilled it all up with all my anime stickers and my old designs it could be a dollar each or six for five it also includes these venti acrylic pens over here we have the die cut stickers i'm also going to have my bookmark which i'm going to put right here have my die cut stickers and the mini sticker sheets and then down here is my qr code with my social media stuff and the payment so in the fronts here there was quite a bit of space so i decided to fill it up with some stuff that could be self-serve so here are some mickey buttons the lanyards we have my bookmarks here and then over here we have the coasters and if these mystery bags get sold i'm bringing some extra containers and i'm going to put the enamel pins in this section this corner doesn't really have much going on over here i have my business cards these are the last of them and i'm expecting them to be all gone tomorrow i did order some new ones that they should be coming in next week but we just decided to kind of fill it with this floral light and it fills it up a little bit but yeah there's not going to really be much going on in this corner at the end of figuring out the setup and usually at the day before the event my husband is the one who is in charge of Tetris seeing all this he does it willingly which i really really appreciate if it was just me i know i would get frustrated really easily over this This is where the store is, but it goes all the way to the back over here. All the way down here. And the store used to only be this right here and down here, but they expanded to this whole area. We're here really early. They don't have any tables out yet, so yeah, we're just going to wait. And we'll see what happens or how long it takes. I was very surprised by the variety of vendors that were there. In total, there were 13 vendors, but then each vendor was selling a different type of product or different type of artwork it's very interesting because it's first come first serves i was the only one who had cute kawaii original items the person beside me was brit drawing you know who she is she is an amazing artist who makes some beautiful fan art pieces she has a couple of k-pop pieces as well and we've been it together before, actually been it on a Doshikon together. So she's an artist friend that I recognize now from doing a couple events. It's just really random where they put us. They gave me table one and she ended up getting table two.
let's talk a little bit about the event. So I got there around 8 o'clock. We were told that artists could go there around 8.15. Prior to that, we got an email saying that we can go at 9. A couple of days before, they said the event was at 9 because they opened at 9. But it ended up being a little later. We didn't get tables until 8.45 because apparently the manager was running late. Once everyone was there, they got the tables out really fast to all of us and then we could go ahead and set up. It took about an hour to set up and even though they said the event started at 9, a lot of people didn't start showing up till around 10. So it was okay that it took us about an hour to set up. This time I decided not to sell any prints. I think in total I've only sold not even 5. This includes events from last year and at the DoshCon this year. So I decided just to take them out completely. And I decided to put things based on price versus putting things together by the type of item. And that did a lot better. Not only that, I had a much easier time doing price tags, which I really hate doing, but I prefer to have it printed out than to write it myself because I think it looks a lot nicer and my handwriting is not that pretty to begin with. So it's just better if it's printed out nicely. And a lot of people enjoy the variety of products that they could get. By doing that, I also didn't have to make 50 million different signs, but then making the signs prior to the event did take me the longest because I did have to figure out how I wanted to do it. The hardest thing about making signs is having to make them in French and in English. It's really hard to figure that out sometimes because most likely things that are written in French are going to be a lot longer than in English. So <laughs> I have to make a bunch of adjustments to accommodate both languages. Another thing I did differently that I hadn't done before was I put up a few sticker designs that was available in my dollar bin and that caught a bunch of people's eyes especially when they were at a distance from my table that attracted them to come over to my table and take a look at the stuff. A lot of people were apparently looking for Studio Ghibli stuff. They went into the comic book store and there's several people who told me that they were trying to find Studio Ghibli stuff inside the store but they couldn't find any so they were really happy to be able to find some at my booth. I don't really have that much Studio Ghibli stuff. I have some stickers and a few buttons and that's it. A bunch of the Studio Ghibli stickers got taken up especially the No Face and Totoro ones. Those are always reliable Studio Ghibli stickers and characters that people are always looking for. The buttons and the dollar stickers usually do pretty well. I'm really happy that a bunch of my original buttons got taken. It makes me really happy. The most popular item outside of the buttons in the dollar bin was my Fox keychain, which I was kind of surprised about, but not really at the same time. It's really interesting to see what's popular in person and online. Online, my bear and bee keychain is more popular, but in person, my fox and snail keychain sold more and I didn't sell any bear ones. Even if something's popular online, it doesn't mean it's gonna be popular in person. I had a few returning customers, those who saw me last year at this same event, if you haven't seen my video from last year, make sure to go check it out. It was the very first time I've been in in person. And it's so crazy the difference between last year's table setup and this year's table setup. People recognized me from the event last year and some from when I've been at Anadoshicon this year. They recognized my business card. My husband said that a couple people said that my business card was beautiful, which makes me really happy to know because when I designed that business card, the one with mushroom cut and Captain Frog on it, I really didn't know what to draw. And I'm happy that people really like the artwork that's on it. I'm kind of surprised because last year's event, my business cards flew off my table like nothing. But this year I had a few left, like only five, but I had less than 20, so I was expecting them all to be gone. I had a returning customer from last year at the same event who had bought my autumn sticker sheet and they told me that they loved it and they ended up buying a lot of my sticker packs and my stationery for me. They made the biggest single purchase and it made me so happy that they really liked 
my stationary items. They even bought some of my more expensive die cut stickers, which are my laminated stickers. Yeah, I was really happy to see returning customers and people tell me that they have my artwork hanging on their walls. Kind of felt like the event this year wasn't as big as it was the previous year. I'm not sure if it's because it was after Otakathon. Don't know what Otakathon is. It's the hugest anime convention here. Also, there was a store where the stage was and they closed it. So they were able to go around there and use that area for part of the event. So I don't know if that is the reason why it felt smaller because the bay was closed. So there's not random customers coming through there. My goal for this event was to make more than what I made last year and I did manage to do that. It's not too much over how much I made last year but what matters is that it happened so I'm really happy about that and I made my costs back. I didn't spend too much but then my husband had the idea to buy those containers to put my products in and my products aren't too big so we were able to comfortably Fit all the products that I wanted to bring into four containers. For a $10 table, I can't really complain. It was a really great event. I made a pretty decent profit. It was really nice to vent again. Hopefully, I can find other places to vend. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!